Thank you for joining us. You are with 3D Radio. We're a community radio station in Adelaide. And uh, I am talking to you because you are on the most amazing line, lineup of WOMAD. It's like bigger than anyone kind of anticipated at this juncture already. So how do you feel about um, being part of that? Oh, I'm so, so excited. I mean, I, I grew up in Adelaide, so I remember WOM Adelaide extremely well and going there and I remember seeing Angelique Kijo there when I was really young and it's just the most incredible festival and like just all like there's no other festival in Australia that's quite like it that brings such diversity and such amazing talent from all parts of the world and to be actually kind of from Adelaide <laughs> originally and um and to be playing that festival this year is just amazing so I mean I'm not just excited about playing but I'm excited about you know, getting to experience the festival as well and getting to see, you know, all these in- incredible artists which, you know, hopefully find some new ones that I've never heard before. I find that that is always the way at a festival is that you go in with those that you want to see and it's, then you capture all these other artists that you're like, wow, my mind is blown, my repertoire has been, you know, increased and I, yeah, it is festivals provide that opportunity to discover new music organically and it just yeah it's just there isn't it and that's the beauty of such um such events and i did think that you were from adelaide but i wasn't 100 percent sure so great so you're coming home um playing at WOMAD, I assume there'll be some family with you that'll come along and check it out. And so for you, families and friends, it's like a um, reunion as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. My dad, my dad's going to come along for sure. And, and it's funny often when I play back, play in Adelaide, you know, some people will come up to me after the show and I'm like, you know, from high school or from various other places that I might've, um, you know, I might've known. And uh, yeah, it's always fun. Always fun coming back to Adelaide. Um, so tell us, when's your set for WOMAD? Uh, so we're playing on the Sunday and the Monday. I can't remember the times exactly. I've got a feeling it's about 5.30ish on the Sunday, maybe something similar like that on the Monday. So, yeah, I know they're not, they're not too late. No. So, um, yeah, if it's, if it's 5.30 again, I just love that kind of time slot, that, you know, sort of just slowly moving into the evening. Yeah. Everyone's still sort of fresh-ish. <laughs> yes. and, um, no one's no one's too worn out just yet. So uh, yeah, um, yeah and it also gives me a chance to um, go and see some of the headline acts too, which is great. Oh yes, it does. Yeah, absolutely. The time. Um 3D Radio is actually doing some outside broadcasting from WOMAD uh, this year. We had our first experience last year. So this year we're going a little bit bigger. So there's every chance, Lockie, that we might end up having a chat with you at WOMAD at some course over the um, over the weekend. Uh, oh, that would be great. And I, I would uh, suggest that you come and find us if we don't find you. But unfortunately for you, I've got your number now. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll be giving you a call and dragging you over if you don't find us, um, because yeah, of, yeah do. we love to um, celebrate all the artists on the bill and particularly um, the Australian components, and then of course the local artists, which um, I played just before your track with Sons of Zoku. They're an Adelaide band that are also featuring on the um, WOMAD bill this year, and they are beyond excited about this opportunity to play on the big stage. You right. have had many experiences on big stages, right? You've hung out with some super cool people in the music industry, <laughs> right? Yeah, well, yeah, I've been since the, uh, well, I guess the 10 years I've been doing my own stuff. I've been lucky enough to, to tour the world quite a few times. I, had like about, I was trying to count it the other day. I think it's about eight or nine European tours now and, and a few over to Canada. And um, and the last one we did in December, which was the, kind of the first one back after everything went crazy, was the biggest one yet. So I'm, I'm still on a bit of a high from, from all of that. And yeah, I feel really blessed to be able to play such great festivals overseas and, and, and on those big stages. So it's amazing. And then, then, yeah, before that, I mean, before I was doing my own thing, I, I was also incredibly lucky to, to play with, with um, bands like Powderfinger and Jimmy Barnes in Australia and, and get to play those kind of mega stages as well. Yeah. <laughs> that was great fun. 
Yeah, so I feel feel really lucky, but it's a you know it's a different thing being able to do your own thing and, and travel around and um and two of that it's uh yeah it's amazing especially when it's all when it's all going great it's um it's just incredible but you know when things fall apart you also take it a bit harder as well though. <laughs> <laughs> so at what point did you realise that this was a career for you that this is no longer I am just uh, you know tinkering around and uh, enjoying myself did it. Did you go? Oh, oh wow! This is my. I this is. I can make money out of this. I can live like this. I this is my thing. I don't. Yeah, that's living the yeah. dream, right? Well, I was working at um, Derringer's actually in Adelaide, <laughs> and um, I was just doing like a little week there, like a bit of a week trial. And I was um, I was also studying uh, at university as well, um, doing engineering, <laughs> ridiculously, and. Um, I remember my brother called me up because my brother Clayton, who's an amazing musician, keyboard player, he was already living in Sydney and he'd got the gig with Deborah Conway and the band that he was playing with, the Mighty Reapers, needed a keyboard player. So he rang me up and I went, oh, all right, stuff this. I'm, I'm sick of this uni business. I'm sick of this <laughs> working at Derringer's. I'm going um, to go to Sydney and, uh, and play some music. And it was only meant to be for... Um, two months, I think, just as long as his tour was going for. And I came up, you know, and um, I flew up, not with much. And then, you know, that a few weeks in, it was just like, you know, after doing those gigs and, and having such a great time and meeting all these fantastic new musicians and and just, it was like my whole world had opened up. I just instantly decided that I'm not going back and music is going to be my thing. So I, when I, I, I did go back to Adelaide just to get my stuff and I put it all in the car, Put it in my Sigma station wagon and <laughs> drove across the Hay Plain and and uh, broke down. But that's another story. <laughs> but I made it, and uh, yeah, that's that was a definite. Yeah, that drive was a definite moment. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so right from there, you you had you got to Sydney, joined in with um, your brother and Deborah Conway, and that was it. Is that what you're saying? It just kind of went. Oh, I'm doing this now. This is my thing. And yeah, it was just. Well, I've just got to make this work somehow. You know, and my brother was there, and uh, and I'd met other people there because I thought it would probably help me out. So, um, and they did, and uh, yeah, and then from there, just you know, things snowballed, and then eventually I started doing my own stuff as well. Yeah, wonderful. So you <laughs> have been described as the Jimi Hendrix of the Hammond organ. Uh, <laughs> do you like that? Uh, I, I find it very, very strange. Um, it was one of those things that people would come up and sort of say to me quite often, you know, like, it's like you're possessed by Jimi Hendrix or something, you know, the way you play. And I was like always flattered by it. But um, yeah, when I finally saw it quoted and I thought, oh, maybe I could actually use that because in a way it's, I think it gives people a small concept of mm-hmm. what I could possibly be like if, if, um, they hadn't seen me play before, you know. I suppose it gives them some sort of, I don't know, energy level or, or um, craziness or, or manicness to the um, to uh, to the way I perform. So, in that sense, I like it, but I certainly don't claim that uh, <laughs> there's any truth there. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. I get that you're saying. Yeah, if someone's put you with Jimi Hendrix, it gives an idea about what to expect, um, in the sense of your passion and. Uh uh, play, you know. So I've yeah. been watching a, a couple of your uh, Facebook posts, and uh, you do uh, very uh, dramatic sort of playing, which is probably yeah. that Jimi Hendrix reference. Um, but also, you is it you fixed a clavinet live on stage whilst playing your Hammond organ and singing? Is that like high achieving? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yes, yeah. so um, oh, that's a clip of um, that was a funny little moment that got captured in Canada uh, about four or five years ago, and um, it had one of those mezzanine levels, so um, people were filming from above, and um, yeah, it was just it actually happens all the time. My clavinet, fully stringed keyboard from the seventies, mm-hmm. and now I've got this giant wang bar attached to it. It stretches all the strings while I'm hitting them as well, or hitting them with the keys, and um, so they quite often break. And what had happened there is one of the strings had broken. And sometimes it's fine when they break. It's, you know, I, can just, I just can't play that note anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, this case, the broken string had then sort of decided to rest over all the other strings. <laughs> so 
instead of the string sort of, you know, ringing out nicely, they just sort of go... Yep. <laughs> so I couldn't play it at all. So basically it was mid-song and I, you know, I just ended up... Uh, that song that I normally play on the cloud, I, I moved down to the organ and played it on the organ instead. And, and with my left hand, I just, you know, you unscrew. It's a, you know, it's a full mechanical keyboard, so it's got these giant nuts and stuff. So I can, I can basically unscrew it and take the keyboard off with my left hand mm-hmm. while I'm still playing and mm-hmm. singing and yank the string out and, and unwind it and just get rid of it and ditch it and then put it all back together again. And it was one of those funny moments where it sort of came back just in time for the uh, the clav solo, and you know, so yep. everyone was like, "Woo!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look what I did! Wow, yeah, that's great. <laughs> and so, um, I, the track I played earlier was um, taken from the studio three hundred one sessions, which was a session uh, around your birthday. Was it because of your birthday, or you were just it, coincidentally? It was just, uh, it, it was something I wanted to do, and then I knew my birthday was coming up, and I thought, oh, well, wouldn't it be perfect if I could actually make it on my birthday? And, um, yeah, that's what we did. The studio was available. We did it at the Big 301 Studios in Sydney and uh, and just did it, did it live with a – it was in the middle of – just between lockdowns, mm-hmm. and um, so things weren't too bad at that point, but it was still – there were limitations. So you could only have 20 people in the studio – we had uh, 20 people on headphones um, listening to basically the mix coming that was being done in the studio control room. But they were in the big live room with us with headphones on. And so it was a really different kind of show and different experience for the, the, um, the people that were there. And, uh, yeah, the whole thing was filmed professionally and recorded professionally and uh, and just turned out to be a magical night. We did, like, oh, I think it was, like, 12 or maybe more songs and I fully expected, you know, I might only get, you know, eight or nine or, or even half that I'd be happy with, but mm-hmm. it ended up being happy with the entire, entire show. So that became the next album. Um, and it was the perfect thing to be able to kind of release in the middle of, in the middle of all the madness. Yes. <laughs> and madness it was, right? Um, so yeah, totally. <laughs> your uh, brother featured on that as well. Is he That's coming right. with you on this uh, no. The Boy Mad gig? No. No, no, he's not. Um, hopefully one day we can do something like that where he'll be able to, um, he'll be able to guest it at one of my shows. Yeah. That could potentially happen for the next album when um, that's going to be coming out in June. Ah. So I'm, I'm just starting to book the uh, tour for that right now. <laughs> so what, what music are you bringing to the WOMAD gig? Is So the WOMAD gig is it's an interesting little mix, actually. It's it's not the trio, but it's also not the giant band with the horn. Right. So it's going to be the trio with uh, three amazing singers. And um, so they'll be doing backups and doing some leads as well. Uh, so... I don't know if you know Karen Lee Andrews. She actually performed at WOMAT last year. Mm-hmm. Yes. She's going to be one of the singers. Um, then we're going to have um, Beck Jensen and Lauren Azar as well. So it's going to be um, – I, I love having them there because they are so amazing. And it's also just so much more fun for me to be able to play off what they do and then just be amazed by what they do on stage at the same time. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's going to be fantastic. And, and it's just – you know, when you get so used to playing with the trio, you know, I don't often get to, to play with the the bigger band or with the singers. So um, it's a real thrill and you kind of never know where things are going to go as well because I've got this whole new sort of um, palette of, of, of sounds and voices. And, you know, often I'll get inspired by that on stage and I'll just let them do their thing for a while. And yeah, it just, you know, it just makes it more fun for me. This is brilliant. I am so excited to um, actually have this chat with you, but also now I'm particularly looking forward to your set at WOMAD. So hopefully we can um, – uh, you said you've got two uh, days, so should be able to catch it. That's the thing with festivals, isn't it? There's so much that you um, have to compromise as well when you move it around and trying to capture a bit of everything. Yeah. But two sets enables a, lo- a bigger opportunity to catch you. Um, I want to th- say thank you for joining me this morning. Um, I think... Pleasure, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, is there anything, yeah, that you want to add or, you know, uh, that I haven't brought up for you today that um, you want to bring to the WOMAD 
sound or you want to inform our listeners about? Um, oh, I think we've covered everything. But maybe just that, you know, if you, if you come and see us play, I'm sure we'll probably surprise you. It might be something that you've uh, not quite seen before. <laughs> Brilliant. That's what we want. So thank you for joining us on 3D Radio this morning. I feel like we might have a chat at WOMAD, at least get you over to say hi, even if it's very briefly. Um, and I look forward to your performance as to the, um, all the people that are, you know, have lucky enough to have a ticket to the uh, event already. It's uh, awesome. unusual for it to sell out at this juncture. So this is indicative of how cool the lineup is. Um, and you're part of that. So that's fantastic. Thanks, Lockie. Yeah. Thank you so much. And yeah, we'll see you there. Yep. Have a great day. <laughs> you too. Cheers. Bye.